We're opening up the Peacock and Williamson mailbag a little different time than we usually do every single week. We're kicking off the week talking New York Giants on hard knocks, behind the scenes on big decisions, and what about one-year wonders? Who's going to have the best season, Love or Stroud? On today's Peacock and Williamson. NFL analyst Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson bring you expert NFL analysis every day in less than 30 minutes. Get an inside look at the NFL on the field and in the front office with elite breakdowns to next level analysis and in-depth information only for the real NFL fans. This is Peacock and Williamson, and it starts now. Welcome to the Peacock and Williamson NFL show. Brian Peacock alongside Matt Williamson at BD Peacock at Williamson NFL. Thanks everybody for making us your first listen on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We love our everyday ears, and we especially appreciate it when you hit that subscribe button on YouTube or wherever you are listening to this podcast. Today's episode of Peacock and Williamson brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, all customers get a boost or a bonus daily. This summer, FanDuel is hooking up everybody, not just new customers, all customers, a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Okay. Uh, let's start, Matt, with the one-year wonders, as I'm All right. Calling. And uh, we've Well, got if you want to start, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't Today know if it... you wanted to bring this up or not, but. Yeah, uh, man. I mean, you get in your 50s. This is how life treats you. I mean, today was my first ever colonoscopy. I mean, uh, <laughs> Doing, doing well. Uh, I mean, <laughs> quite the quite the event. Not as terrible as you'd think, but the uh, the anesthesia is pretty much worn off. Did that this morning, and yesterday's the hard day. I mean, if you have one BP, you, you, have you gone down this road yet? You're a little uh, younger. I have not, uh, but you're not making me want to make an appointment for it either. Uh, yeah, but yeah, uh, I'm glad you're you're past your post colonoscopy now and you're feeling good and we weren't sure what time we're going to be able to do this episode but we're able to get it out here for you uh, <laughs> exactly. on North monday so it's been an odd week it has been an odd week and yesterday's a tough day actually because the only thing i consumed for, all day yesterday was water you know so you can't eat all day and it's sunday and i'm just sitting around doing whatever i'm like i could never do this during the season like i need a snack i need something i mean like i couldn't go the whole day and then 5 p.m they give you this I call it a poop juice, but I mean, it's like this concentrate that you mix with water and you got to chug it. Yeah. And within 15 minutes, you know, it hits you and you evacuate and then you don't leave the confines of the home for the rest of the evening, to say the least. Wow. But that was uh, interesting. <laughs> it's Today, not the, the procedure problem. was much better. It's, it was 4th of July weekend, right? So if everyone had a safe weekend, you probably yeah. were eating amazing. So it was probably an extra interesting evacuation there for uh yeah. exactly so i'm sure many of our listeners have had them they're not as terrible as you think but has to happen um but boy yesterday was an ordeal so there uh, we go fighting through it let's go please, get back on the horse please do not send us your evacuation story <laughs> at, Peacock at williamson nfl um let's get into the mailbag a little bit and we've got a, a question yeah that was based on, and we still have tight ends to come on tomorrow's episode, by the way, yeah. for Matt Williamson's uh, fantasy football rankings for 2024. But a follow-up question to our to Matt, Matt Williamson's, uh, I don't, don't want to say hour, it was, it was Matt Williamson's rankings, not that I don't agree with his rankings. I'm on board mm -hmm. with your rankings, Matt. Um, as a response to Williamson's quarterback rankings, Josh, the Jerry Rice of question askers, brought up this. He said, listening to the podcast, you have Love at 12 and Stroud at 8. The argument against Love was that defenses now have tape to figure him out, yet last year, even with half a season of good football, this is Love compared to Stroud. Love, 41, 59 passing yards. Stroud, 50 fewer passing yards, 41, 08. Passing touchdowns, 32 to 23 in favor of Love. Turnovers, 14 to 9, that favors Stroud. Uh, rushing yards, 247 to 167, favoring Love. Rushing touchdowns, favoring Love, 4 to 3. Why is Stroud getting the benefit of the doubt when Love beat him in basically every meaningful category? And the last time he played, we saw him 
torch the 49ers and Cowboys. He both had a full season to study him, despite being two of the league's top defenses by DVOA. Still got shredded by Love. Make it make sense. Well, uh, I will say that Love looked good for a lot of that game against the 49ers, but mm -hmm. uh, I would say, did he shred the 49ers? Uh, I would say no, and I would say there's a reason why the 49ers uh, won that game over Jordan Love. And as far as the Cowboys go, we know how they do in the playoffs, but it's a, it's a good point, and it's a good question. I think 12-8 and eight isn't that far apart because mm -hmm. that tier of quarterback in the NFL, it's just really hard, and it's kind of pick your own. Um, and Matt, I know you want to speak on this because your rankings have actually changed since then, since last week, when we, when we, uh, released those quarterback rankings for fantasy football, uh, fantasy football is not real football that needs to be said me. The biggest thing for me is I'm taking Stroud all day and yeah. year one for one guy and it's year four for the other guy. I mean, yeah, I think that does carry some weight. Now, I'll be very honest, very astute question by the uh, Jerry Rice of question askers, for sure. And I guess not coincidentally, maybe it's just we see this similarly. I have not moved Stroud from eight. He's right behind Kyler Murray. He's right behind Joe Burrow. Again, this is fantasy. But I have steadily moved Love up. And coincidentally, well, I guess maybe not, he is nine uh, right now. So I have Stroud eight. I have Love nine. And then reading this question, it, it even see more similarities. I mean, I, I do I trust both offensive coordinators, play designers? Absolutely. Yeah. Do I like their young weapons? Do I see those weapons getting worse? No. You know, do I, do, is this probably pass first teams? Yes. Were they both super impressive in 2023? 100%. I probably like Houston's line a little bit better, but we're splitting hairs. Love's a better runner, which is vastly more important for fantasy. Now, Am I going to guarantee that both these guys keep ascending? That would be really impressive if they do. I mean, history shows that they might level out or take a small step back or one takes a nice step forward, one takes a baby step forward. But boy, I, love isn't very impressive to me. And I was very slow to get on his uh, on his bandwagon. I didn't love him coming out of school. I saw a lot of the same problems over and over with love, small school guy. But now I'm seeing the opposite. Like, he gets better. He's taking to coaching. He's very aggressive with his decisions to throw the football. I mean, he, he could still get more accurate in the short areas and things of that nature. But he drives the ball over the middle without fear. I mean, all the things you want to see to build around. So I'm on board with both these guys. And I, I think it's, you know, for the, for the ranking standpoint, it's just a – had him in the right neighborhood. Now we're going to get him at the right address. You know what I mean? It takes a little while for them to feel the spot. I'm know? definitely not going to fight anybody that that likes love more than Stroud. And I do think the that love being bad at the beginning of the year and great in the second half of the year mm -hmm. is a little bit of hyperbole. Like he was, you know, he was okay at the beginning of the year, and he wasn't yeah. the best quarterback in the NFL in the, at the end of the year. You know, he was not wasn't like he was a completely different guy all year long. But he did get stronger and had a better second half than yeah. a first half. But I think that's kind of over overrated and, and love was phenomenal i also well, think his year. super young receivers noticeably got better too as the season well, went both on. guys yeah, right made, yeah helped, i don't want to say made they helped their receivers play up tremendous like, we talking about like nico collins made tens of millions of dollars because of cj stroud you know mm -hmm. and uh one of these packers receivers is going to make tens of million dollars right uh in that offense but you know being in a, the same offense with a really good offensive mind in Matt LaFleur in Green Bay for multiple seasons is less impressive than a rookie walking in to a really difficult verbiage offense straight out of the gate and doing it. like Stroud's season was more impressive by a lot to me, even yep. though the numbers are very close. Yep. And frankly, that's not even a love thing. That's just his, his, just his season threat. Yeah, was more impressive than any first year starter we've seen in a really long time, you know, since Damarino or whatever too. And I do think that Houston has a really good coaching staff, and it's great that they didn't lose their offensive coordinator. But I think we need to remember expectations. Like, I've talked about this with Kyler Murray in Arizona. Like, this time last year, everyone on the planet thought Houston was going to have a top-five pick. You know, like, you traded your first-round pick instead of the Browns? What are you thinking? You know what I mean? I was completely wrong on that. I thought the, yeah. the, I thought the Texans were out of their minds. Uh, and, and they got it right, man. It's, they got it right. Uh, kudos to them. 
and we've seen sophomore slumps too. So it, it doesn't mean just because Stroud was awesome as a rookie that he's going to be awesome in his second year. Uh, I'm, I'm voting on him being awesome and continuing mm-hmm. to be good. And you could actually improve and maybe your numbers aren't quite as good. Uh, but man, I, I loved what I saw from love as well. And, and a couple of fascinating players to see how they follow up their breakout years last year. Yep. I think the best is ahead of both, but uh, if I was also fantasy aside, I get one to build an NFL team around, it would be Stroud, but I would take him over just about everybody. I mean, there's not many guys that are ahead of him. Next VR. Could we see a VR decision-making combine event to help us Mm. to help teams figure out who the next great quarterbacks are in the NFL? Today's episode of Peacock and Williamson brought to you by FanDuel. And, you know, we love sports. That's why we are all here talking about sports every single day. And you love them so much, you never want them to stop. But as the playoffs in the NBA, NHL wind down, you get fewer games. And the sports aren't sporting as much as maybe we'd like them to. But FanDuel lets us keep going whenever we want. All you got to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime you're in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers, not just new customers. All customers at FanDuel get boosts or bonus Daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. You got Major League Baseball games to bet on. Home Run Derby participants just announced who's going to win the Home Run Derby. Those odds will be up there. And of course, tons of NFL futures, rookies of the year odd, MVP odd, who's going to win the next Super Bowl odds. Find them all at FanDuel.com. So head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. So a question here in the mailbag, and by the way, we're going to double up on mailbags this week because we missed ours last week and uh, we got a lot of great questions here and keep hitting us with those questions for later on in the week after we do our tight ends episodes and uh, hit all the latest news around the NFL at BD Peacock at Williamson NFL or drop the questions in the YouTube comments. Uh, This question is from, who is this question from? This question is from Corbin about VR at the combine. He said, Hey guys, what do you think about a new combine event? VR AR drill like Jaden Daniels uses for training at LSU. And I know a lot of quarterbacks do start to use some of this VR mm-hmm. stuff and helps them get tons of reps in rapid succession. Uh, all QBs go through the same scenarios and have to make real time decisions. It could replace the whiteboard for teams and be super fan friendly type of event. What do you think about this? And we would see it on the screen. Like it's a video game playing out. A VR virtual reality decision making event for quarterbacks at the combine now. So I think there's a lot to unpeel here that's even deeper than the question. Is you, you kind of mentioned that we've seen clips or we've heard some people talking about quarterbacks doing VR on their own. They don't take hits, they see a corner blitz out of the corner of their eye and they get it out and understand the hot read. And I assume you can like type in the play call and you don't know what the defense is, but, oh, it's cover two, man. I didn't know it's coming. How do I react? All those type of things. So I just thought of this because I was watching it over the weekend. I've recently gotten into F1, which is really fun. It's an odd world. And the the Netflix series kind of hooked me and I, I pay attention to F1 now. And those dudes, they race like 20 or 30 different tracks and it's the same tracks every year. And they're all very, very different. You know, one's in Europe, one's in, you know, all over the place. One's in Texas, blah, blah, blah. And they, they virtually reality simulate those tracks like crazy leading up to that week. And then they practice it and it's a different world. I mean, but everything happens extremely fast. And I've often thought, how can we football relate this? I mean, it seems like quarterbacks the only way, but, The other part of this question I want to address is I feel like the combine as a whole might be at a crossroads. We might be looking at it five or 10 years from now and go, man, do we care about forties and starts and jumps when we can do miles per hour? And, you know, like there's a lot of stuff that could change that we might look at even this version of a combine and be like, that's kind of Al Davis old school. We might not, we could do a lot better than that. You know, uh, the, the NFL would hate that because it's such an event. Right. And it's so fun. But I think a lot of people already know, even when, even while you're watching the 40 times, you know, it's not that important, but you still watch and you still get excited and you still yep. say, ah, 
you still see. Man, we still sign it. it. That corner yeah. ran a four five one instead yeah. of a four four nine. Oh, yeah. You're like, oh, he's too slow. He's not going to be able to stick. Maybe he's got to <laughs> he's got to move to safety. That's or safety. You see some corner uh, that's got a fourth round grade run a four two nine. It's like, oh, he's probably going to get into the first round, even though you know that in a lot of ways it's actually not that important. It's actually more telling that you're not going to be good when you run in the four twos than you are going to mm-hmm. be good in the NFL. Like we know this already. And then teams are using so many things like GPS tracking now to see what your football play speed is. So maybe you run a four seven, but man, when you are a, a, a safety, you're flying or linebacker, you're flying around the field and your GPS numbers are some of the fastest on the entire team. So your play mm-hmm. speed is different. And a lot of teams are leading into that too. Um, so it's uh, it's not a science. It never will be a science. But I hope the combine doesn't go away because it's fun to watch in February. And you know, it's it's uh, it, it's an event that's really cool. And I like seeing the guys run fast. I like seeing the the quarterbacks throw far. But I would have a feeling that zero top quarterbacks would opt into a, a VR because a decision making drill because it would hurt them possibly more than it would help them. Yeah. And the the players that would really like that are the ones that want the the playing field to be leveled and the late round quarterbacks that are smart guys are like, okay, yeah, let's get on this VR decision making thing. And maybe I can make up some ground on some of these or, other quarterbacks because I'll never be I'll never have a bigger arm or be taller or faster than them. But maybe I can compete here and it might open some eyes. And so maybe it would be an event that some quarterbacks would do and it'd be fun to see. And I would absolutely tune into it. But I bet it would be the type of event if in 2025 they said, hey, we're going to do a uh, a VR decision-making event at the combine. It's televised. I think every top quarterback that was already like looking like a first-round grade would opt out of doing it. So I guess there's positives and negatives. Like I always immediately think of your guy Purdy. You know, like if Purdy's like going into the combine, we don't know he's going to be even drafted at that point. Right. He'd be like, "Sign me up. I'm yeah, a processor." You know, yeah. <laughs> and maybe he gets into the fourth round. Then you know, uh-huh. and and it gets better evaluated. So. But the Caleb Williams of the world's like, no, I am not doing that. I can uh, only hurt myself. Why so, would I do uh, that? Yeah. As far as it being a televised event, I, I, I doubt it. All of the top players are kind of opting out of stuff anyway. So maybe it's just another way to to get to know the, the later round guys better. So I'm all for it. Uh, and, and I think it's a great training tool. And I think it would be awesome for teams to learn if it was private and we never really got to see it either mm-hmm. when more players do it we don't really get to hear about how their whiteboard stuff goes. You know, some stuff gets leaked out, but we don't ever get to see it. The fun part would be seeing it. And uh, that would be really cool. And it makes me think, too, since we brought up Stroud the first segment, one year ago we were talking about how his processing isn't good enough because he didn't do great on the one test that, you know, now no one talks about (laughs) all of a sudden, you know. He might have crushed it in this sort of an event. Yeah. Yeah. So do you have any clue, and I would be shocked if you do, I who knows, but like, other sports can simulate. I mean, you'll, you'll see golfers on a, a a turf tee driving into, you know, a, a mat. Or I remember it, 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 when I was a kid, you could throw a pitch and it would be a strike or not and tell you how fast it was. Like, right, yeah. is there stuff like that that you don't have to beat yourself up as much or be on a course or be on the mound that's worth it for other sports? You know, I like, for I bet not. I think that, yeah, the mental reps for football are huge. And, yeah, and I think yeah. people are behind. Do you remember last year, the uh, the Netflix show, was it just called Quarterbacks? Yeah, and a friend of mine put that out, and receivers coming out, like, tomorrow. Right, yeah. So yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I looked watching it. It was so well done. But it was. I'm watching two different quarterbacks. One is Kirk Cousins doing everything he can to get ready. He's doing this thing that's, like, helping him, you know, react quickly with his mind. Yeah. Um, and – then you see, uh, I think it was Marcus Mariota. Like I was like, he's just like, oh, all right. Here's another day. I guess I'll, I'll be all right. I guess I'll go to work. I don't know. It's like you know, it's just like well, I was like stark. I was like, wow. I'm definitely taking one of these quarterbacks over the other, and it's not surprising to see how their careers have gone. And I think that's probably the new frontier, especially for quarterbacks. But it's not like an offensive lineman can get physical reps against a, yeah. another dancing bear in the VR world, unless maybe you, I, I don't know how you could possibly how you could do it. simulate that. But as far as mental reps for a quarterback and processing, absolutely. It's hugely helpful. Like, I don't even think offensive linemen get much out of mini camp and OTAs, yeah, let alone yeah. doing something in the basement. You, right. Uh, I did mention the F1 thing. Like what they do is crazy. Like they have all these, 
uh, they train their eyes. They train their reaction time. I mean, every, they're going almost 200 miles an hour around curves and stuff like this. And they hold a wheel really close like this. So they do all these drills where their hands are like super tight so that they could handle the wheel better. And, you know, like I was really impressed with how they train. You don't think of a driver as being has to be an optimal athlete, but it's a much different way of being an optimal. Well, right. I've, there, there's that drill they do with the tennis balls, right? Where yeah, so yeah. Drop two tennis balls and you have to be able to catch it as, as quickly as possible. Yep. Uh, just reaction uh, time oh. and hand eye. And yeah, I think I saw an F1 driver and Tyree kill doing that drill together with each other and seeing how, okay. The, I could see that. Yeah. Hand eye coordination was, and he was really good at it right away versus what the lay person would, you know, in that sort of a context. I'm sure they do it every camp, but last year's Seals training camp, Joey Porter's doing it, Deontay Johnson's doing it. You know, I mean, like it's it must be something to it. You know, it is really cool to see what one sport you can learn from another and how yeah. cross training and you know d doing uh, martial arts stuff or boxing stuff or you know other people incorporating things that football players were doing into their training now or track and how you get better mm -hmm. at your off and this little just tiny incremental. Uh, advantages you can gain and it's pretty it's pretty amazing where we are right now and it's it's really what's changed today's athlete versus past athletes where you know guys have been the best athlete in the world but they had a job in the off season they weren't doing right. anything to to get this much incrementally better every single day like guys are now that aren't even that good and like the stuff we were reading one year ago is two has got hurt too much and so now he's doing judo stuff to know how to fall well, he didn't get hurt last year. I mean, that doesn't mean if he gets hurt, that's judo's fault. But I mean, can't hurt. You're getting concussions, so you strengthen your neck muscles more. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Help. Yeah, it, it's, or the, it's the Christian way. Watson one leg bigger than the other craziness. You know, they never uh, diagnosed that 20 years ago. No, not at all. <laughs> oh, he's injury prone. See you yeah, later. Cut him. That. Next, New York Giants. Some behind the scenes there, and uh, interesting, interesting decisions made this offseason via hard knocks for the New York Giants. And what about mock drafts? Should they go the way of the dodo? Next, this episode of Peacock and Williamson brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience is the formula for winning championships. It's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance: superchargers, roof racks exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car into the MVP and bring home huge wins Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. So on the topic of, of the draft and, and things that uh, could be added or taken away from the combine, this one from James is interesting. Why has sports media not moved on from mock drafts? They're nothing but, quote unquote, empty calories and are always inaccurate anyway couldn't agree more they're one of the mo more worthless things that we do but i enjoy them as much as the next guy and, and i do them. you know I'm what i mean <laughs> like i'm hooked yeah, yeah i, I mean, like reading them i like doing them it's just uh it's, yeah it's, it's, it's the same as uh doing a fantasy mock draft it's it's, yeah. it's the same as dreaming up trades for your team matt you cover the steelers i know you get tons of calls on your radio show from listeners that are like what if we traded blank and blank to go get brandon iu of course right? and like it's non-stop it's just it's 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 fun and i hope mock drafts never go away they're super inaccurate but for me the fun of a mock draft is just it's it's not to be right though and i, I think that's kind of yeah, part yeah. of what's i think if you're looking at mock drafts to be correct you're looking at them the wrong way anyway mock drafts yeah. are okay if this player this player and this player go one two three what could happen at four it's yeah, yeah. With the like all the offensive tackles this past year, right. you know, or the quarterbacks going that high was crazy, you know. And I think that's think where that most, mock drafts came about from teams because teams were like, okay, we've got to try to figure out what our plan is, and we're picking 11. Okay, mm -hmm. let's go through this. Let's do a mock draft. What do we expect to happen here? What happened here? Ooh, could we call here then? In this case, okay, if this happens, we can't move here. What if we can move here? And then if these 10 guys go, who do we want at 11? That kind of thing. Yeah, and again, like I, I always do this for the Steelers. I mean, whatever number they pick in the first round, I build Matt's Steeler board. If they're picking 20, I go, Caleb Williams is my one. Jalen Daniels is my two. 
the best edge rusher might not be high on my Steelers board because they have edge rushers. You know what I mean? But I want every tackle I can get. So if you could get in the mind of the other thir- of 32 teams that way, I think there's a lot to learn there. And that's why teams did it. Like, this sounds super old, but like when I was at Pitt, we shared the facility with the Steelers. And I would park next to scouts and whatever. And you'd see in the back of their cars, Mel Kuyper's Blue Book. And, they, 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 you know, Street and Smith. I mean, back yeah. then, there was hardly even the internet back then. And they would pull a bunch of mock drafts out and be like, well, look in this scenario. Uh, we actually get J.C. Latham. Didn't think that ever could happen. But it doesn't sound crazy if you get in the other team's heads. And, so, you know, talk to your pro scouts and be like, ah, oh, the Giants would never do that. Don't even go down that road. And then the, I also like the, the, the ones – that are way too early, like the ones we're reading now. But I don't even look at the teams. I just want to learn three sentences about the new right. players. Oh, yeah. it's like, oh, this guy at Oklahoma State could be a first-round guy. If Oklahoma oh, State's playing, I'm going to stop and watch number eight. Yeah, because, let's look you know. at the left tackle or let's right. look at the yeah. receiver. That's all I want to know. I don't care if he has them go to the Cowboys or the Bears or whatever. Who cares about that? And uh, you, there's times when uh, uh, there was the – oh, man, what was the name of the quarterback? I think out of LSU. Uh, we're going back a long time, probably to those same mm. days we're talking about. And I think it, Mel Kiper in his, you know, too early day after the draft before, yeah, yeah, 2005, 2003. I don't know what year it was. Long time ago, and uh, it was the first time I ever heard about someone doing a mock draft for the following draft, the day after that draft just ended. And it was a quarterback, Thomas. Maybe it was a quarterback out of UNLV. He was mocked number one. Mm-hmm. Didn't even get drafted the next year, and he was mocked number okay. one the day after the draft before. Yeah, and that's it's crazy. I mean, it is. I got to be pretty good friends with Todd McShay at ESPN and that he always was in charge. I think right after Mel gave it up, Todd always got the Monday after the draft. And he always said, it's my least favorite thing ever because everyone holds you accountable. I'm so spent from doing real draft prep. I was on the air for 30 hours all weekend. And, and inevitably though, he manned up and every time he did it, he'd be like, well, these are who my 32 picks were for the draft that just happened. And some of them end up going in the sixth round. Some of them don't come out of school, you know, like, but I just want to know the names. Something really jumped out to me watching Hard Knocks with the New mm-hmm. York Giants and, and following them through the offseason. And to be honest with you, uh, it's more, this is much more intriguing because we don't get to see this. And, and kind of part of the mock draft thing and why everyone thinks wrong is teams are lying and they don't want you to know. And there's so much schadenfreude going on and, and lying and, and, and trickery. And nobody really wants you to know. And you think you know what a team's going to do, but they really are uh, secretly want this other guy. And it's so fun to watch these post-draft videos of like some GMs on the phone with every single team because they want to go trade up for their guy. And none of the other teams care about the guy that this team wants. And then eventually Mm -hmm. he falls all the way down to where they were anyway, or he moves up three spots. They finally get their guy and everyone chest bumps and is happy about it. It's like, no one cares about the guy you want, especially starts getting in around two and three. So it's really funny to see that. And it very rarely is, are the teams actually fighting for the same guy. Um, But there was a quote from Hard Knocks, and they're sitting around and they're trying to figure out what they're going to do. GM Joe Shane and you know ownership is talking about, man, I'd hate to lose Saquon Barkley, and you know. And there was a quote from from GM Joe Shane, and he's talking about Daniel Jones and Barkley and trying to figure out what to do. He says, "You're paying Daniel Jones forty million dollars. It's not to hand it off to a twelve million dollar back." And that stood out to me so much because, and I wanted to bring it yeah. up to you and. um, and I know you said you have seen that episode and I'm thinking, oh man, we got to talk about this with Williamson because. Okay. Well, get a better quarterback then and hand that, let that guy hand off to a $12 million Saquon Barkley. And I'm not, I'm not the pay running back guy, but I'm like, yeah. so you're letting this bad decision of paying your quarterback $40 million affect your other decisions. And you're actively making your team worse now because the guy that could actually make a difference on your team. You're letting him walk because you're paying your quarterback. You're not paying your quarterback to hand it off to Saquon Barkley. And I was just blown. I was kind of floored by it, to be honest with you. That stood out to me too. I didn't know that's the quote we were going to talk about because I immediately thought, so is the answer, let Daniel Jones throw it 60 times. You know, <laughs> I mean, like is, is, that would be my direct response. Then, like, okay, well let's get a $1 million back then. And if that's your philosophy and we'll just throw it all around the neighborhood and see how that works. Maybe or, we'll win how? zero games. Yeah, or how about don't pay Daniel Jones forty million dollars, pay Saquon yeah. Barkley twelve million dollars, and guess what? I didn't. I made your team better, and I saved you thirty million dollars too. I also found it interesting. Frankly, it's only one episode, and I'm not going to kill the Giants. 
I wasn't very impressed with the conversations that were being had by the the leaders of the group. And I think it was a cap guy and another pro scout was like, Saquon's not much different than Josh Jacobs and the other guys. I don't think he'll be scooped up quick. And like yeah. five minutes later, Philly <laughs> takes him and, and like <laughs> one minute into yeah. like your, your bitter rival too. Yeah. He's like one of the smartest organizations in the league. You know, it's like maybe one team knows what they're doing and one doesn't, you know, I didn't really come across super impressed. Like, man, I'd learn a lot from that room. Yeah, it's like you nailed it. Good job, guys. <laughs> right. You really got a handle on this thing, you know? Which is why nobody wants their draft board seen because they don't want people to know what they look bad. Want. And that's yeah. why, and you know, other teams watching this is like, gosh, I don't want to be on this show because I don't want the dumb stuff I say. And there's such a, and this is one of the things like, you know, having had conversations with some guys that are in scouts and, and coaches and in, in rooms, it is pretty insane how arrogant some of them are. And speaking yeah. in absolutes about this stuff that we've been talking about on this whole episode that we don't really know. And they are so, and I guess you have to be, I guess, to be in that job, but you just have to be committed to an answer. And it's amazing how confident they are being a hundred percent wrong. Yeah. And, and we can wrap it up with this, but my last thought though was one year ago, this same group of leaders, men who people in charge thought we have to franchise Saquon. What changed? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, One year ago, you were married to him. Now it's like, ah, eh, man, I don't know. I would love to hear from the Giants fans how you feel about this with the hard mm-hmm. knocks and uh, and the direction of the New York Giants right now. If the right folks are in charge, uh, it is not easy as well. And to to rebuild a thing, and, and would you have preferred a teardown rebuild originally than trying to continue with the parts that the new GM and head coach we're, and like a part of its ownership too. Ownership says well, we got these guys. We drafted these guys. We believe in them, so we have to keep them. So now you're kind of handcuffed if you're the GM. It's like okay, we got to start here because we can't really do what we would have done if we had complete autonomy in this roster. So there's mm-hmm. so many aspects of that. So if you're a Giants fan, let us know what you think. At and, B- and real, I, real quick, and to be clear, I, and I said this at the time, I do commend the Giants for going getting. Runyon and Illuminor and like NFL linemen, their offensive line was laughable last year. They've invested draft picks. They might have a starting five that's acceptable now, as well as trading for Brian Burns. You know, like you went and got some people on the line of scrimmage that I respect. I did love that conversation too at the combine where they're talking to Dan Morgan or not. Was it the combine? No, they were at a Maybe pro day. Or, yeah, I can't remember. This okay. is free, free agency, right? Uh, but you know, it's the thing where the, the GMs are kind of together, arms folded, watching something. And Brian, there's like you know, a joke about something. And oh, what about Brian Burns? Like, two first round picks, all to take. Like, oh, I don't know, I'd probably maybe a first round pick. Oh, we maybe we have something like mm, interesting. And they yeah, ended up, you know, it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's so, like, those trades don't happen all that differently from you and your buddies in your fantasy football league, right? Y'all get together, have a couple beers, and before you know it, there's some trades happening, <laughs> right? Like. Oh, Brian Burns had thought about him. What do you need for him? All right, cool. Let's talk. Yeah, yeah that was cool. I, I did love that. Yeah. Uh, all right. Thanks everybody for listening. Get those mailbag questions in. Keep them coming for uh, this week and future weeks here as we roll through the off season. Matt Williamson's tight end rankings for fantasy football 2024. A really interesting group as well. Coming up on tomorrow's episode of Peacock and Williamson.